Hey guys, Amber and Jacqueline, and we have recently got back from Mexico, so down in Cancun, um, Puerto Morales, um, and we're going to just do like a little bit of a review of our trip, of the resorts, of the activities and adventures that we went on. So if you guys are wanting to plan a trip down there, maybe you could stick around and see just our opinions of the resorts and the um, excursion company that we went with. Yeah, and the resort was called Coral Oceans or Ocean Coral? Ocean Coral. Turquesa. Yeah, turquoise. Yeah, turquoise. Ocean <laughs> Coral Turquoise. It was all-inclusive. It was. and But there was an option if you didn't want to do all-inclusive and if you just wanted to pay as you go. We mainly stayed at the resort. Um, we didn't go into town, which is actually one thing I regret that we didn't go in, um, like, into town. I read some things where it's like a 25 minute walk on the beach or a quick taxi drive um, right over there. And at the resort, they'll help you. One question I have for you, Jacqueline, is that this is your first time down in the Riviera Maya, uh, first time being in the Caribbean Ocean, and you've been to Mexico before. You've been to Puerto Vallarta and like Tijuana and any other places other than, nope. than that. Okay, so what is your opinion of like a resort on this side of the Caribbean side on you know because you were on the Pacific side before yeah no I love it I think it's prettier way prettier it's everything that everyone says it is I mean everywhere you look it's beautiful the beaches are white sand what I really liked about our resort was that they had like a little table a little umbrella and like chairs everywhere you look there was somewhere to sit and that was really important because it was hot there and the ocean is absolutely beautiful. We just happened to go where there was sea seaweed, yeah. which is everywhere, I guess, but it's especially bad at certain times of the month. So you want to look it up um, to sort of plan around that because we had to wade through maybe three feet of, of seaweed. And then once you got past a little bit, it was better. Uh, they, well, they call it sorgasm, which sounds like sarcastic orgasm, but it's just the seaweed that they get down there. But the hotel actually tried to take care of it they with the tractors. They did so good. That's one of my favorite yeah. things about the hotel is mm -hmm. that they were very clean and the staff was very friendly and they were able to like just always be there and picking up. Mm -hmm. So whether it was the tractor coming through and then a guy behind them breaking it up, they dumped it far end of the... Yeah, so you um, weren't smelling it on the beach mm -hmm. at all. But we did get there at the very beginning of that seaweed season because it's like, I think they say from May to like September or October or something like that. So, so we just got like, it got a lot worse. Like, yeah, I saw that video. Yeah, there was lots of bad pictures and videos of during like just July and August being really, really thick with it where you couldn't even wade out. Yeah, like, that would be sad. And the whole reason I wanted to go there was to be in that ocean because the ocean on, you know, even in California, the Pacific side, but especially Oregon, it's too cold. Florida's awesome to swim in and I love this place. So I want to go back. Let's go back in the winter time. Yes. What, uh, another thing I liked, I was saying that, uh, how clean everything yeah. was and it wasn't just the beaches, um, like everywhere you went, everywhere, whether it was like the housekeeping or the landscapers mm -hmm. or the like restaurants and the waiters and stuff. Even their bathrooms and, you know, the places around the pool, everything smelled nice. It was yes. just, it was really So if you're looking for a resort that's like the staff is friendly and it's super clean and, uh, we went during, uh, the pandemic mm -hmm. and they had, um, for some of the things we went to went and saw during our trip down there their COVID guidelines wasn't as strict but the resort did pretty good you had to wear masks at indoor settings when you're close to people and then there's always someone like practically right behind you as soon as you get up that they're sanitizing they're everything oh, and they would give you a little glove to yes. touch anything in the restaurant so that was yes you know, hand they, they really sanitizing tried. stations mm -hmm. everywhere and gloves and Things like that. So that is. They all wore masks too mm -hmm. the whole time. All I never stuff. rate staff. I've been to this resort um, one time prior in 2018, so before the pandemic, and I would say that it was clean still. It, the front, the staff was still friendly. I did privilege that time, and privilege you kind of stay on a separate side of the resort, not too far from we were. No, we were really close there. to them, but they have um, you know like just. You get better alcohol, like higher shelf alcohol, 24-7 um, room service, I think. Just like a few extra perks and the checking in was different because that was seriously my biggest downfall was when we arrived, the checking in process was hard. 
it wasn't so much as doing the COVID because when we got there we had to fill out like a health screening thing. Um, it wasn't that. It was just like the whole. I don't know. They just, well, I think they were trying to sell us stuff, and in some places, some resorts, um, you know, not necessarily this one. This one being the Ocean Coral Torquesa. Um, but they had one lady that was really following us around. It was very concerned about Amber's um, single status. Yeah, my marital status. She was very upset that I was I was single, and it was to the point of like kind of frustrating. Like, what what's it to you? Yeah, they're all about selling stuff. That I hear that a lot. They want to give you this package and that package, and you just got off the plane, and I was like, no. Yeah, tired, um, yeah. hungry, sweaty. Um, what's nice about the resort that we stayed at and um, with the seaweed being so bad is that um, there is things to do within the resort. Mm -hmm. And um, so if it's too gross to get out into that water, there's multiple pools that we could have gone to. The kids' pool had a water slide and the yeah. big dump things, but yeah. I kind of felt creepy if I went to play there. Well, I didn't I even have... see anyone over there. Yeah, there was really no one no. over there. At the resort, they had activities to do. They had water activities like um, those little sailboats. I think they're called like bobcats or cats or something like that. Then they had uh, kayaking available and that was all included. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to do those. I did want to go kayaking, but we just kind of ran out of time and things. But then they had water aerobics in the morning, which we did a few that times. Nice. Yeah. And at night they had entertainment. Mm -hmm. They had a bowling alley. They had, um, I think they had, they had tennis courts and basketball courts, like on the family side of the far, um, like north side of the resort. And they had like kids area. So there's plenty of things. If you didn't want to, to pay, if you just want to go and stay yeah, there's and stuff things, to do. there is Lots. things to do. There's, Lots to eat too though. Yeah. There was a lot. The only thing I didn't like is you were like, well, what did you like about the state? I think the coffee maker, like I, I couldn't figure that out. I was, I don't know. Yeah. I, so I had to like get up and go get my coffee. <laughs> but it was nice. I will, and um, the coffee was good though. My last video that we, that I um, edited of like my last, our last day in Mexico, I talked about how we were always at Mike's mm -hmm. coffee bar and we would go there for, um, to get coffee in the morning. And then after we got our coffee there, we usually walked over to the buffet and got um, breakfast. And then, cause we're both the type of people that would drink coffee first before mm -hmm. i mean at least for me i have to drink my coffee before i even eat anything oh you know what was a trip though is the um i like a lot of cream with my my coffee and everything was carnation carnation you know evaporated milk or something yeah I mean, you know it was okay. i think they had some real milk i think you had to ask yeah for it um but i loved mike's they had sandwiches there so we went there breakfast lunch and dinner anytime we just needed a break or a refresher a cup yeah. of water or it was ice. open the whole time so yeah that was nice everything was pretty much open they would have different nights where different restaurants were open i don't know what it's not like without covid because you said there was like so many restaurants yeah but they only had maybe two or three open per day that they would kind of you know do a roundabout what you know this this night's it's japanese this night's it's steak this night italian oh this night God, mexican those empanadas oh i know i want to I wanna go back just so i could eat the empanada mm -hmm. um yeah so i really like the the resort so you don't have to go out there's plenty to do plenty to eat um although i feel like we really didn't get like good authentic no, I don't Food while well, we were there. No, the maybe only the breakfast though. Those breakfasts definitely oh, were breakfasts more so Mexican, I would imagine, because most most of the time in America we don't eat fruit and fish and watermelon juice <laughs> for breakfast. Yeah, that was weird. But they were all like super. But fresh. then they had like those um like those meat stews. They yeah. called it stew, but Definitely. it just seems like yeah. you know, like a I don't know. But it was just so good, like pork or fish yeah. or beef. Definitely savory. So yeah. it was good though. But then they also had like your typical American yeah. um breakfast of like bacon sausage and like either it was French toast. French toast or waffles or pancakes mm -hmm. and it just varied each day. But it was something along those lines, along with like an area to make toast and like oatmeal or something like that yeah, and then they right. also had like kind of like a fresh bar which had um like yogurts and then fruits and there was always dessert yeah the places but the desserts weren't like the way that we're used to like the super sweet i guess if there's anything about it i didn't like was the desserts were all the same 
it tasted like a dream whip or like cool whip made with some pudding in it and then in the, but they were beautiful absolutely they were just made beautiful. so artistically and you pick it up and you're like oh that's jello but it's it was I beautiful. like jello and cream like you know so they were okay i didn't mean to see avocado once oh my gosh you're right oh no the tortilla soup had three little oh man that tortilla soup was good it was like bean broth most tasty bean broth i ever had and you don't even like beans i don't even like beans it but good. it was so good it was like mom been cooking beans all day it probably was oh it was so good now i want it <laughs> um i just really want to go back for those empanadas and that uh tortilla soup we didn't really talk much about um the the room at the resort the room was nice i thought it was it was very spacious um and i liked there was a little couch area you know uh, the two beds, they're like full queens, weren't they? Mm -hmm. um, the, and I thought the linen was nice. Yeah. Um, the patio was really great. And it was a beautiful view. It was just the garden view, but it was really nice. Oh, and it was clean. I didn't see like cockroaches all over the place or anything like that. So that was a relief. I was worried about I think that. we saw one cockroach. One huge one. It was outside and then it like scurried away. And lots of little lizards everywhere. Mm -hmm. Kind of like if you're in Florida or mm -hmm. the South, I imagine. Yeah. Um, but cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> Very clean. The bathroom and our room was was big and nice, like the shower, like everything had separate doors that, like glass. It's a special like tub. So there was a big tub and a big shower. Uh, the bathroom was weird because the toilet was in this little glass box. Yeah. So that was weird. And there was no door to the bathroom. They have these sheer curtains. But the, 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 but the toilet, the, where the toilet was and where the shower was, it does, sh it does, it does shut. It doesn't latch, but the doors do shut um so you do have privacy and there's like a fan over the bathroom like the yeah. toilet area and the shower area so it's not getting steamed or smelly or anything like that yeah, it was just really i would but say. it was clean um on the privilege side the i can't remember if there was a tub indoors but i know on our patio that there was a jetted tub on our patio which then had like when we were over there we had a partial view of the ocean um and then of the Caribbean and then, you know, of the pool area too. So we got both views and that was nice. And so I've had both garden view and ocean view slash pool view. Yeah. And they were both nice. The jungle view, um, I mean, it was pretty, it was loud because there's all these things, but I just love the water and I always just want to look out at the water. But paying the extra, I don't know, like 30 bucks a person each day I don't know if necessarily always worth it. Yeah, I, I was totally happy with not being on the privilege side. You know, that was it. I loved it. Um, the do the store there. You want to talk about how expensive? Yes, it was I was going to say that. that was horrible. The store they had this big store that has souvenirs and like swimming suits, like everything you kind of need if you forgot or broke. But it's very expensive for two bottles of like Banana Boat or Hawaiian or whatever name brand. Sunblock was like what 35 36 bucks mm -hmm. or something like that yeah and that's just ridiculous and Gary and Susan our friends um from the pool they said they went to town they got a bunch and then they went to the grocery store yeah. and got like the same brand of sunblock for very cheap like three bucks each like cheaper right. than what it would be at if you went to Walmart right I mean you know that's what that's what you do you pay resort prices for that stuff you know what was it for a candy bar like five dollars for like a m and M's I don't know I mean not that we paid that we don't need to but the sunblock, yeah. And we, we brought sunblock. Yeah, we did. We went through it, though. Yeah. Our pasty white skin that hasn't seen the sun in, like, yeah. nine months was like, oh, what is this? Yeah, I got burnt just getting coffee at 9 a.m. Yeah, but I loved it. Yeah. Every second of it. Me too. Like, just, <laughs> just do it again. Go. Let's just go, go again. again. Being plus size um, and the chairs and things. Yeah, it was very easy to get around there. I didn't get any feeling of judgmental people. It was like a family resort. Uh, there was a lot of people that were partying, too. Um, you know, a lot of those different sizes people and no one in the staff gave me, you know, any weird vibes or, you know, looked me up and down. No one was, you know, had an attitude. Um, even those like beautiful girls from Poland and their little bikinis were like, didn't they help you out? Like you left something. Yeah, I and left like, my, like my uh, selfie stick, like my tripod. So people were really nice there, but you know, um, the, sometimes people worry about like the thin chairs, you know, if you're a person of size, you know, are you going to fit into it? Is it going to, you know, collapse, especially you know, you think, oh, different places have cheaper stuff. But no, this had wide, comfortable everywhere. You could get around the tables. You could get around the buffet um, where you were laying at, on the beach. You know, that was very easy. All the chairs and the lounges 
were, um, you know, stable and also, you, you know, getting around in the hotel room, there was a lot of room for that too. So I would say that this is a very plus size friendly place. Yeah. Even the hammocks. Mm -hmm. you know, I was able to get into a hammock. Yeah. <laughs> and so they were, I mean, if you're not really good on balance, maybe have your, your friend, your partner, someone hold, it. hold, hold your thing so you could get in. Um, but it didn't rip or anything no, weird. No, they were good, you know, but... So if you're not used to getting into hammocks, hammocks are tricky whether you're skinny or not. Right, You right. know, they're all flimsy. Well, you're having such a good time in Mexico anywhere. I mean, I'm like wearing a bathing suit, riding an ATV, and like going down the zip line, and I would usually have a cover-up at least. But I was just too busy having fun to worry about it. Right. So I would say everyone was friendly, mm -hmm. uh, especially people from different countries, like, you know, those people from Poland, a lot of Polish. Yeah. yeah. So on the weekend, know this, um... On the weekend, a lot of more locals, Friday through Sunday, more locals come. I don't know how local, whether they're an hour. Like, we have a cousin that lives just like an hour and a half from that. She said it was three hours. Or three hours. I'm just wishing it was an hour and a half. I know. <laughs> uh, well, they know, have weddings there and yeah. things. They, they host that sort of thing. So, locals come. So, don't be surprised. You know, if you're there, you know, Monday through Sunday or whatever, and then all of a sudden a rush of people come Friday, um, it's a lot of locals. And stuff, and they're just there for the weekend. Just how we drive that hour to our coast, to Lincoln City, and like, yeah, yeah. But it was a good time, no matter your age, your weight, uh, where, what country you're from, and stuff. It was, I would say it's a good place to be. Let's talk about the air the plane. We flew from Portland, and then we had to lay over in Seattle, and then from Seattle, which is kind of sucks because we had to go north to mm -hmm. head all the way south. Um, but that's just like kind of being in the Pacific Northwest yeah, so Portland, high up. There's not a whole lot. Yeah. Um, but then we got to Cancun and going through Cancun's customs was super easy getting through Quite all that. Easy. But what is crazy is the zoo of taxi and shuttle companies. Oh as soon as you hit that doors <laughs> out, not even before you get out, they're like, as soon as you pass through the customs area, they're right there and they're hounding you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so whether you go with a shuttle company or pre-arrange a taxi pre company. Pre-arrange, I would pre-arrange everything because it's madness. It is so, it's, because you, you get off these planes, especially if you travel, like this time we traveled the end of spring. Before when I traveled there, it was like winter time. So you're, we're coming from the Pacific Northwest, which is a little bit colder. So, you know, here we are with leggings or sweaters or whatever, and then you hit that hot humidity, humidity, and then they're just like on you like no other. You went immediately and changed to the bathroom. Yes, I did. We just kind of had like, to wade through all yeah. the people. I'm like, I don't care. I need to put on something else. So for, I would say pre range The company we went with was Cancun Shuttle. Um, I just chose them because they had a good rating on TripAdvisor, but I also heard that, like, I think it's called American Shuttle, was had good ratings and reviews from other like vlog travelers so just go through read some things um and sometimes resorts do offer shells as well but just know when you first go out those doors they're gonna be hounding you and it took us a little bit to find cancun shuttle well, we had we to like did find the guy he was all about taking us to the right person yeah so i would go with them again because yeah, i was so satisfied and i think i went with them um before i've been to cancun three times yeah, you said you'd gone with them. I think, yeah, that was yeah, the one. I haven't made remember. all the arrangements, so that was pretty nice. Yeah, and it was pretty easy to do, and they, like, uh, emailed and checked, just, like, double-checked that you're, like, on the plane, that you're making it. They they were pretty nice. And they had a return. I think it was pretty cheap, too. We had a private shuttle mm -hmm. just because of COVID, because I'd done shared ones before, but because COVID, we were kind of nervous, and I think it was, like, $100, $80, $80? Round trip? Round trip, yeah. So I would go with that. How did you like, let's kind of skip ahead since we're on airport talking. Um, this is your first time in Cancun airport. So when we, after our trip and we got back to the airport to fly home, how did you like the process of that big line to check a bag, COVID process? Okay, so everyone was like right on top of each other. The way people are when they're at the grocery store and they're in a hurry and they figure if they're right up on you, you're going to go faster even though the line in front of you is not moving. There was a lot of that zero six feet distance. Nothing. Nothing was written it. down and everyone was like right up on you and half the it, people weren't even wearing masks. No, I mean it took forever, but not because the airport staff actually everybody was so... really fast. There was people going in the lines that were airport staff that were checking, like, Do you have this? Do you have that? Okay, are you in the correct line? I mean, again, 
the staff at Cancun with this airport was fantastic. Yes. And once we got, so checking your bag is a nightmare. You need time to do that. Every time I've had to check a bag there, the lines are horrible. Um, but the security, you yeah, check your bad. bag, and then you have to go up some escalators to through security, and that went pretty fast. Yeah, so. that was good. But that bag checking thing, and then you have to right now, and able to get to the United States, you have to have a negative COVID test within 72 hours. The hotel provided that, which was nice, and it was $35 fee for everything, um, all total. So that was really good, and they actually had one at the airport as well. Yeah, I didn't check the prices on that one just because she did it prior um, at the resort, and then I had actually gotten COVID a while back, and I was still within this 90-day period, and my doctors wouldn't test me yet. Oh, there's my DoorDash. <laughs> um, so I, my doctors, like, I had a written note from my doctors and everything that said I had previously had COVID, and that um. I'm good to travel and so I had to get that written by my doctor and it was good for the 90 days or something like that um, which worked going through the airport and um, but when we got to Seattle remember I was like the one of the first people like this lady oh, yeah. so when we landed in Seattle as we were getting off their plane they would let like 15 people go and like sections like that and then there's like people like we say 10 people on either side of this hallway spaced out and they direct you to go to someone and they check your COVID test results or whatever. But I had the paperwork from my doctor saying, um, I previously had COVID, but I am safe to travel during this time. And it meets the recommendations for the federal government. Like I went through the whole thing, but the lady was so confused when I like handed her. The she had that, to get her supervisor, but the supervisor knew what was yeah, As soon as she saw it, she goes, oh, no, good. But it was just, I think it was the lady's first time seeing a document like that. Because everyone else is just popping out negative COVID test. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about our adventures there. So, uh, we did leave the resort twice. Yeah. yeah, we were there. And the whole reason that uh, I wanted to go to an all-inclusive, you know, I've been, my husband's been in hospice for the last year. So, I needed some place where I didn't have to make any decisions, like what to eat, what to do. You know, they had all the food and all the amenities and like constantly people there saying do aerobics or do this or just chill like there's always something to do every night dances and like little barbecues and it was cool but you know also there was things i'd never done before like the cenotes and mosquitoes yeah. so i was like let's do it they had this place right there what was it called again so the company that's at this resort is called um dive it um or dive it mexico or something like that it's like dive it um, and they had so many different things yeah. to do different packages. Now, if we went into the town, I know a lot of times you could find, um, cheaper things. You could, uh, negotiate better and maybe get a little bit lower of a price, but we weren't really looking to like go out and search for things like Jacqueline was saying. We were just she needed easy. that break from having to make too many decisions. So they were really nice. Um, they're right there. They weren't pushy, yeah. you know? And uh, we explained what we kind of wanted to do, and they worked around what whatever we wanted. What, what we wanted, and the first one we went was um, we went on sea dews, and then we went snorkeling. And this is your first time you said on sea dews. Yeah. I previously when we were in Puerto Vallarta, I went, but you decided to stay at the resort that day. You didn't want to do a big crazy day. Yeah, yeah. It was your birthday. It was my birthday, and that's what I wanted to be left alone. Yeah, that's my thing. And so, and I was tw I was thirteen, 13. at the time, and um, our my older sister, Katie, she got to drive the sea dude, never let me do it. So I was so excited that I'm like, I got to do it myself. God, it was so smooth. It was so smooth on that ocean. And that's what the guy was saying. He's like, you don't want any kind of waves like there was in the Pacific. There, well, and there was some little bit, like there was a few times that, and they're like, you have to like gun it yeah. when you hit those waves. Yeah. If you go slow, you're, you're not going to really make it. I was worried I was going to fall. We didn't. There was no. no chance of it. It was nice. You could sit down. It was really big stable yeah i mean it would fit two people but mm -hmm. i'm glad we went with the um, each of our own we met carlos there and i i've been meaning to get back i asked carlos would you do an interview because i'm so like how do you get a job like this how do you, every day you gonna go onto the caribbean ocean and play on sea dews and go snorkeling every day he yeah. gets to do that he says he loves it he loves the ocean yeah he's happy so i was like i need to have i need to talk to you like how do i become you mm -hmm. you know and so i'm hoping 
to set that up. Like we had it kind of like planned, but then uh, some things happened, so I had to change it. And I haven't got back to them. I'm wanting to because I think it'd be interesting to see what that kind of job is like and how do you how did he become it? Yeah. You know, um, you didn't go snorkeling because you were kind of worried about um, getting up. So at the resort when we booked it, we asked him when we go snorkeling, how are we going to get back onto the boat? How like because we thought we we're going to go sea doing and then like stop and then go on a like a boat. But it actually was everything was all like we went got on the sea do sea doos, and then we went snorkeling off of them, and you were kind of nervous about being able to get back up on the the sea doos, and it was you kind of have to have a little bit of um, upper body strength, and what I found is that if you go with the kind of like a little bit of waves to pull like you know when you dip down in the wave and goes back up like pull with the waves. We've got that on tape, so you yeah. can see how graceful Alan Amber is getting on and off, but. Yeah, but I, I didn't also, I don't really like swimming with fishes and I don't like having the thing, you know, but I had a good time and I got my legs tanned and that was really important. But it was probably hot. I, <laughs> it this, was hot. I'll tell you my biggest regret is that they didn't tell us about like what we could bring or what we should bring. It was just like, they just assumed that we knew everything. Mm -hmm. And, um, I wish that cause in the sea dews they had cubbies yeah. where we could put our snorkel gear or back things in there. And I wish, we had to leave it there, and they're like, "Oh, no problems, no worries." I wonder if that's why they were so weird, like thinking, "Why didn't we just take it on the thing?" But they didn't tell us that we had cubbies in the sea dews. But I wish I brought my um my contigo, my water bottle, with me because yeah. swimming in that like sea um salty water, yeah, it, I was so parched, I was dead. And what I didn't know is how much that water splashes on you. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't get too hot. But now I know if I want to do that in the Pacific Northwest, I got to do it in the heat of August, you know? Yeah. But it's the Puerto Vallarta was warm, but nothing was as warm as the Cancun water. And that yeah. was beautiful. And we got out past the sargasm. <laughs> it was so bad that um, once we got onto the sea dews and went a little bit, uh, we had to stop. And um, Carlos and then uh, Carlos had a buddy riding um back with him and I forgot I don't remember his name he but was he was quiet yeah he was very quiet but pretty cool he they had to jump into the water mm -hmm. and check our um engines or water intake or something I don't know make the sure mechanics of sea dudes yeah but they had to make sure that once we got past all that seaweed nothing clogged up the machine so they took care of their machines mm -hmm. and the machines were well also I, clean clean yeah Another thing that we did is that um, a few days after we went see on the sea dudes to snorkeling, we went to the cenotes. Yeah. And did you like that? I did. I loved it. The water was so refreshing. Yeah, it felt good. And um, I like the way it smelled in there. There's this. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't smell. I know I could I but still. It just had a really cool smell. It's just something different, you know. I'd never been into an underground river before, and I thought it was going to be scary, but it wasn't. Well, it was scary. I. I chickened out on jumping well <laughs> into the cave. Yeah, that was crazy. So you have this spot, it's like a hole in the ground, and then you look over and it's actually the underground cenote, and people were like, but a lot of people ch chickened out too, but they were jumping directly in there. Yeah, but we went to a second location, Yeah, and it was it was big and open. It was in the middle of the jungle, and you said it smelled like eucalyptus. Yeah. I, really, I love the smell of eucalyptus, nice. and I'm so sad that I wasn't able to smell it. But I was able to jump off the platforms and do the zip lines there. Mm -hmm. I think it was just like, I'm not claustrophobic, but there's something in me that says, um, don't jump into this dark hole like this abyss that you don't know <laughs> right. how deep it is. Yeah, you know? because we hadn't even gone and climbed down there to mm -hmm. see what it looked like. They're like, like just stand there just... and jump. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Yeah. <laughs> Everything like, is no problem. Yeah, everywhere. Like, how much weight, then, like, how much can I weigh to do the zip line? You know, and uh, they like, use no metric problem. system. Yeah, this guy weighed 318 pounds. You didn't mean no, I mean, he said it in like the metric or, you know, yeah. what are they? I don't know. No. I don't know. What, and we're like trying to figure out the math on that. <laughs> like, well, shit, he's, he's bigger than you. Right, right. So I was like, okay, I'll do it. And then I went without a helmet. <laughs> yeah. On the zip line. Crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> I, I didn't like how short the zip lines yeah. were. I felt like. There should be at least two different platforms yeah. or something. Yeah. But then again, I'm kind of glad because when right. having that guy, some random guy, like catch me, you know, and then I was just. Well, I felt a little rushed too because when we went from the cenotes there and then we got on the ATVs to go through the jungle, there was like a lot of let's go, let's go. And I was still wearing my bathing suit to ride on this ATV and it's hot. Yeah. 
Yes. Those but there's and at the, the motor, there, you know, right there. Like, yeah, they just expect you to wear what you're going to wear through the whole day right. everywhere. Right. And you can't bring anything with you. No backpacks, no filming, no nothing while you're on the tour. After their tour, they're like, yeah, we don't really care because they just want you to buy the film package. I wish I just plopped them the 60 bucks and be like, I will buy it, but I also want my own mm -hmm. footage. Thanks for watching our review. If you have questions, uh, ask us below because... We'll answer. Yeah, we'll try. We'll do our best to do it, but... Uh, we'll see you in our next video, which hopefully will be somewhere in the Caribbean. Yeah. <laughs> Bye.